Hello everybody, hope they are good. I hope that you have a nice weekend. Today is Monday. Um, to be honest, I also like Mondays because uh, for me Mondays mean the start of a new trading week. Um, it's always kind of exciting and, and, and I feel motivated. So we're going to go a bit through what has happened to Bitcoin in the last few days uh, because the last video was on Friday, but yesterday on Sunday I also posted the Bitcoin Sunday update. The first thing that we uh, mentioned the uh, Sunday update was um, the weekly levels. We're going to go through them in a minute. But uh, then at the end of the Bitcoin Sunday update, uh, I posted this projection. Uh, it was a projection where I saw this uh, liquidity trend line, okay, that every time it goes lower, there is more liquidity in here, okay, because in also in this area, there is going to be liquidity, okay, and it gets big and big and big at that point. So it was quite a normal that um, also after a sweep of the lows, uh, price tends to go again to the range highs. Um, that was what I was projecting, you know, a little retrace. You got that week there. Okay, also, if you notice why we were holding all the time the the one hour 50 MA, that was a good entry. Then we break above the trend line, tested a support. You only had one retest. You didn't have uh, many opportunities. You only got that retest there. And then uh, we basically touched the, the range high. So that projection completed. Um, it's kind of difficult to look at this range now and try to make sense of what would, of what could happen next. For that, we need to try to go into the weekly time frame. Then I would also like to go um, into some altcoins and the Bitcoin dominance, because the Bitcoin dominance was a bit tricky this weekend. We were projecting uh, that the Bitcoin dominance was going to go down and money was going to be shifting over the weekend from Bitcoin to altcoins. That happened. You can see the Bitcoin dominance is dropping like non-stop since, since Friday. But right after the video, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin dominance did something a bit strange and it was this, this push up, okay? That push up uh, caught me by surprise. It temporarily invalidated my charts in altcoins because price broke below the 4 hour 50 May. But then if you go and check, for example, now Solana, okay, you can see, go to the 4 hour time frame. You can see how then recover the 4 hour 50 MA and then price, you know, started to do that move that we were talking about. Same is happening with Arbitrum. Check Arbitrum. Right? There you go. You can see it in here a bit more clearly because you also gave an entry, okay? You got that on Friday. That little surprise. Price breaking below the 4 hour 50 MA and, and, and Arbitrum went quite lower to be honest. But then you got the recovery on Sunday. Sunday was a good day. Test the, the 50 MA back as support and then continuation uh, on Sunday night. All right, with Chainlink. Chainlink didn't move that much, but also there you go. You lose temporarily the 4 or 50 May, recover it, test it as support, and then you got a little pump, okay? They didn't go as high as I expected. And um, also taking into, con into consideration that Bitcoin is still ranging, but look at this move here, okay? That was at the same time as the Bitcoin dominance was going up. It was quite a strange day, Friday evening, okay? But there you go, also Bitcoin going down there. Why? Why would Bitcoin go down? Hang on, look, from 52,500 to 50,600, almost $2,000 drop on Friday evening. It's very strange, okay? And at the same time, the Bitcoin dominance went up. And now you can see, Bitcoin continue ranging. That's what we were talking about. And the Bitcoin dominance going down but there is always a few traps in the market um you just have to be careful that it doesn't catch you by surprise and if it does like it did to me then no problem you have invalidation you cut the trade or you don't enter and then you enter again when the trade is valid um but it's, it was quite interesting to mention this because you can see how strange that pump was in the bitcoin dominance while bitcoin went down on friday evening didn't make any sense okay but the market is full of surprises. I'm talking about surprises. Um, we could also talk about the weekly time frame. Let's go to the weekly time frame, guys. So in the Sunday update and also uh, on the video that I posted on Friday, that was the last video in the channel, I was talking about this resistance zone here, okay? 52,000. And we were talking that it was very important for Bitcoin to close above this level because if it closes below this level, then the risk to the downside for this week was going to increase quite a lot. Now, 
Bitcoin actually closed above this level because it closed at 52,150. Okay, uh, it closed above 52k. I'm happy with that. Okay, that means that the risk to the downside for this week is not as, as is not as high as if Bitcoin would have closed the weekly uh, candlestick below this level. So we are good. But I, I also mentioned this in the update that I would like to see at least two candlesticks closing above this level. So it's very important that this week's candlestick also closes above this level, above 52,000. If that's the case, then it's very likely that we see continuation to 60K. All right. Um, that's what I mentioned, that we closed yesterday's uh, cand weekly candlestick above 52K doesn't mean that we're going to go this week to 60K. And this is what I wanted to mention also yesterday in the Sunday update. And I think I wrote it uh, very clear that I would like to see at least two weekly candlesticks closing above this level. So this week is going to be very important to hold above, th above this level. And it, the same goes for the other case. Okay, if we close this week below 52,000, then okay, let's see what happens in the next week. If again we close below 52,000, that is telling me that it's very likely that we drop back to this level. That's 44,000. All right. Um, but this goes about, about probabilities. And having two candlesticks closing above or below this level is going to give a lot more chances for that move to happen. So that's the thing that I wanted to mention in the weekly time frame. Um, all I want to say is that pay attention to this week's uh, weekly candlestick because if we close now instead below 52,000, then careful with 44. Okay, because yeah, closing a couple of candlesticks below 52k can trigger that move still. So we are not out of the woods. Also remember that it's Monday. We still have uh, seven days to go. So, but still, if we close this candlestick also above this level, then we could see 60k the next week or so. All right. So that's what I wanted to mention. High block capital liquidation levels. Let's do it quickly. You guys know the rule of the channel. Liquidation levels first, then liquidation heat map. The delta is basically neutral. Delta li liquidations. Okay. Um, during the ranges, when we have a range, a lot of long positions uh, get closed. And also we had a, a stop hunt. So it makes sense that the delta is, is back to zero now, back on Monday. Okay. That's very good because it basically uh, resets the, the liquidity of the chart and we can now see new moves. Now, regarding the liquidation spikes, we can see some levels that are quite important. 52,800, 53,100, and I would also say to the downside, 50,500. All right. So these are the levels of interest. Let's see if they're in the liquidation hit map so we can see anything else. Seven days time frame. Let's take it. Oof. Um, not very clear, guys, because we have liquidations to the to the upside and to the downside. So there, it's a range, okay? So it's normal. There are going to be traders long in the range. There is going to be traders short in the range already. So it's normal that the liquidations are appearing to both sides, but this doesn't give us much of a clue. Because if all the liquidations were, um, imagine if all the liquidations were to the upside, then you know it makes sense that market maker triggers a move to the upside to hit those liquidations. But because of the liquidations are also to the downside, and that means that there are still traders long in this range, expecting you know 60k soon, then there is uh, liquidations um, to both sides. Now it's quite interesting. I'm not gonna lie that there are more traders short in this than long in, okay? Or at least uh, this is what this chart is telling me. You notice there are more yellow bars, more liquidations to the upside. That means that there are more short liquidations. Short liquidations are to the upside, long liquidations to the downside. So having more short liquidations than long liquidations are telling me that traders are preferring to short the range, which uh, in a way, um, it could make sense. Um, especially if we close this week's uh, weekly candlestick below 52k. But right now, I might, I might think that that's a bit too premature. Um, there is a risk of a stop hunt above the range highs to hit all these liquidations first before dropping, if that's the real move of the market maker, all right? So that's quite interesting regarding liquidations. Now, let's go very quickly to the other book. 
This is the order book and I'm going to be very quick with it because it's quite clear. It's, it's basically showing liquidity at 53,000, okay? 179.4 Bitcoin worth of limit sell orders. Now, are those really limit sell orders? Like, is, is, that, is that really a sell wall? Or are those going to be stop losses, short liquidations? Um, to be honest, we've had a look at the at the range. We've had a look. This is this is basically above the range size. We've also had a look at high block capital. So, in my opinion, for what I've seen, it makes sense that those are going to be short liquidations and also a few stop losses from traders trading this range, thinking that we're going to break to the downside. Okay, so this is what I mean. Are those traders going to open in positions prematurely? And we're going to see a stop hunt first to 53k. Or are they going to be right and we're going to drop straight away? So that is basically, in my opinion, the narrative um, and the main question of the of the current price action. I don't want to discard a stop hunt at 53,000. So we're going to go back to the chart. We're going to try to make sense of all of this and see if we can come up with a projection. I'm back at the chart to throw my final thoughts about what is possibly going on here. And first of all, let me extend this range because I think we're gonna be ranging for a bit, for a while longer. And the thing that is uh, worrying me the most about this chart is this liquidity pool here. Okay, let's see if the indicator is working. Yeah, it is, hang on. This is my indicator, guys. Um, I've removed the trading sessions uh, for now. Uh, I can enable them if I want to very quickly here, but for right now I've, I've, I've disabled them because I only want to see what are the interesting levels of the chart. I can see some weeks here that got filled. I don't really see any new weeks here. Um, here so I see some, some weeks that got filled. So regarding weeks, I don't really see any week of importance, of interest, but I see this liquidity pull to the downside. Also notice how this moved down that we saw on that Friday evening that I told you was quite a strange move. It went exactly to this uh, candle here, okay? It didn't start to retrace the, liqu the liquidity pool. It feels as if they are leaving it for later on, okay? Uh, that's basically what they did, because if we started to jump into this liquidity pool, then it's very likely that price wouldn't have recovered the range. And once it touches this liquidity pool and it starts recovering it, it would have made sense to continue retracing the whole thing. So it feels like they are leaving this liquidity pool for later now. What that makes me think is that we're going to continue in this range for a, for, a, for a while longer. The market maker is, in my opinion, going to play with impatient uh, traders that are going to start to open positions and then they're going to decide what to do next. But remember, there is a lot of liquidity at 53,000 in the order book, in Hablo Capital. Those are impatient traders opening positions already. All right. Especially because we've just retested the range size. So they're thinking, time to short. And they are not wrong with the idea, but they have to be careful that we don't see something like this, okay? Because if that's the case, they're gonna get stopped or liquidated before they see their move playing out, okay? And that will be to this liquidity pool at 50,000, which it would surprise me that we don't hit that level again. Uh, it's a, just think about it, guys. It's a whole number. 50,000, it sounds very strong. It's going to be a level where a lot of traders are going to engage with price. Let me remove my indicator, go to the four hours time frame. Um, we didn't spend there much time, okay? Only, the, only here. And that was since Monday, Monday to Tuesday, two days playing in this area. Don't you think that it would make more sense to continue playing around this level for a bit longer? To me, yes, okay? That's what I think that, in my opinion, it's more likely that we go again towards this level, 50,000, but I don't discard first to see some kind of move like this, okay? That stop hunt can happen. Um, any trader that has already opened shorts, they have to be careful with that. And they also have to be careful with what I've been telling you. Second weekly candlestick closing, about 52,000, there. If we close this weekly candlestick above 52,000, then it's pointless to favor any shorts. We should favor longs still. And yes, the, the, the chart looks overextended, but come on. If you just flipped a resistance into support, what would you be shorting? All right. So 
I think that next week we're going to know more than we know now. And also in the coming days for sure. But for right now, guys, just trade the range. Okay? That's basically what I would say. Keep an eye also on the 1 hour 50 MA. If we can hold this level and we come again to the range size and we are playing against the range size like this over the next few hours, that is basically going to tell me spike up, hit 53,000, all those stop losses. Because just think about it, guys. Any trader short in the top of the range, where are they placing their stop losses? Well, they're thinking about it and they are thinking, let me see. Well, I'm going to place my stop losses here, uh, right above this white line, and also right above this spike here. Because that was the last high. And oh, 53,000. It's a good number. I'm going to place them there. Because I'm not going to place my stop loss at 52,900. I'm going to place it at 53,000. That's how the retail mind works. So keep an eye for this scenario. If we play again around the around the range highs, while the 50 EMA in the one or time frame is holding our support, then very likely that we hit that liquidity at 53,000. Okay. Then after that, we'll check if that was a stop hunt. We drop again back below this white line. That basically would trigger a short for me, aiming for this liquidity pull down to 50k. Simple as that, okay? Um, I might post a, a post about this on Twitter later, if that's the case, if we start to see something like this. If we see something like this, I'll post my idea of what could happen after 53k, all the triggers, so you can also have that in text and only on video. Anyway, this video is getting too long, I'm going to close it here. Thank you so much guys for watching. And I'll see you soon.